Welcome to a new video. Today we will implement a dial action with all its features. So rotating, tapping and pressing the dial and then we will compare it to a key action. So let's dive right into it. So in the code we have to obviously react on all the events that happens whenever we use the dial. But before we can actually do that we have to enable that action so it will become available on a dial. And to do that we need to add the encoder here under controller. Once we do this, the action will be available and displayed in Stream Deck under uh, dials and we can now drag it also onto a dial. Next up, we have to look into what are the differences whenever we are using or handling a, a, a dial versus when we're handling a key. And for this, I've already prepared the code a bit, but let's look into the theory first and then jump into the code. So in theory, we have to obviously deal with a larger screen and Elgato is providing us a layout system here for that screen. There are certain layouts already predefined or you can define your own layout. For simplicity reasons, we will go with a predefined layout because the layouts that are predefined are you know, pretty good and you can use them for many, many things. So we are going with the uh, layout called $A1 and this will give us a title field, an icon field, and a value field. And I can set this by using the method uh, setFeedbackLayout. And here I'm calling $A1. And this will then um, say that as soon as the action appears on the canvas, this layout will be set. And now I can also use the setFeedback method in comparison when you are setting up a key on key down for example we're using the set title methods to set a value on the key here we now uh, use the set feedback method and here I have to uh, use the values that were defined in my um, layout in the predefined layouts you can use the uh, documentation as a guide on what values to set and how you can set them here's already an example I'm using the um, value uh, attribute and the icon attribute to set a set value and an icon and that works straightforward and awesome so the next events that we have to react on are dial down so when we press the dial then the rotation and um, on touch tab so on dial down pretty much works the same way as a key does um, we are getting an event and we can just react on that in this case, what we will do is that we will reset the counter and we, we will put a dial press into the title and also, because we can, update the icon and set the value as our new count. Obviously, we may not forget that we have to set our settings because this is the attribute that will be then carried over um, in the instance across that event. Then when we have a, a rotation of the dial, we can we will then get a dial rotate event. And this works a little bit different. So what we will get here is ticks. And depending on the speed of how fast you turn the dial, it could also happen that you get a larger number of ticks, for example, five or 10. And what we're doing here is that we're using that and just adding it to the count. If I'm turning it clock, uh, clockwise, then it will be plus. If I'm turning it counterclockwise, it will be minus. And what we will do to visualize that is that we will update the title with the ticks that we are getting. We are again going to set the value as count, and because we can, we'll update the icon. And then last but not least, we can use the touch tab and here we will say we will reset to the initial value of 100 in the value counter. Um, say touch screen tapped and use the stop icon to you know, be updated. So we know something happened. And now let's see how this looks in real life. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this is helpful when you develop your Stream Deck plugin. 
Next up will be a few videos around logging, where the property inspector will go, and I will also share videos around multi-actions and what you can do with those. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.